18-14, Mr. Jerry Stoker. Yes, sir. Coventry Villas has definitely received most of the work for rezonings over the past week and changes. Um, met with the applicant, uh, property owner, uh, the developer, and the engineer, and they were working all the way up until Friday evening to try to get you something that has changed. And I think ultimately what you have in your packet is an updated cover sheet with some considerations. I will tell you the only update I've had on that cover sheet is I did speak with the county engineer today um, and get his recommendation. His recommendation was for approval. So we have zoning and engineering for approval, planning approval with one condition regarding a sidewalk extension. But really the updated materials dominantly focus on the site plan. And so this is where most of the work took place. This was the initial site plan on your screen, 35 lots, right around 4,000 square feet. Um, a different configuration for the green space is when I flashed up on the new site plan. The new site plan you can see was a larger lot size. They lost three lots. They're down to 35 residences. They shifted that green space to provide something that to me was more centrally located and also a little bit more usable by the residents. The design still tries to accommodate for some privacy concerns from the adjacent property owners. But ultimately why I relented on the lot sizes is because my initial goal was for 6,000 square foot lots. Uh, next door, Coventry is 6,000 square feet. If you drive through, um, it has turned out well um, for that size lot. There's a two car garage with those houses. My problem was is at 6,000 square foot lots, those houses are selling for around 180 to $190,000. Um, part of my hope with this property was that we would be able to provide housing that I consider affordable, which to me is 150 or below. And you, I don't think we can do that with a 6,000 square foot lot based on what we have next door. So I compromised with them, went down to a 5,000 or a 5,200 square foot lot um, with a single story residence and a one car garage as a requirement. And that's where we compromised out. So they lost lots. I sacrificed on the lot size to go down to 5,000 or 5,200 square feet for a slightly larger lot. And um, another compromise was they went from five foot side yard setbacks to eight foot side yard setbacks, which I think will help. But ultimately we got to approval with one condition regarding a sidewalk extension. And that's really where we left it as of Friday afternoon. So I have not heard from the applicants. I expect to hear from them tonight to give you some feedback, but. Ultimately, that's where a large majority of the conversation took place is to try to take this very unique piece of property and see if we could make something work not only for the comprehensive plan, the surrounding development, but also for affordable housing. I think we're there, um, but this is something that I know is new to you since our work session. So as of Friday, you now have the most current site plan, and you can see the orientations and the developments and the lot sizes, but those were ultimately the biggest changes that we had. So with that, I'm open to any questions, but I know you probably will have questions for the applicants. I do expect their engineer to at least speak for them tonight. And I think that's where the current situation of this development lies. What put your minimum lot size that you're recommending? Uh, the minimum that we have here is 5,000, but most of them, sir, are 5,200. The initial site plan had them at about 4,000 or 4,200 yeah. 42 change minimal about that most of it. Hey, so what did you say the sidewalk setback for? Did I miss that? Eight feet. Eight feet. So the initial site plan had them at um, five feet. Mm -hmm. And with this site plan with the additional width, they lost some lots, but they gained their eight feet now, eight foot side yard setbacks. And also, if you would help my seasoned eyes, mm -hmm. what's the front yard and rear yard setback? So the front is 15 and the rear is 15. If the lot touches an external boundary, it's 30. And there's two lots that have a 24. So 15 to 30 feet is, is the rear yard. Could you may I ask a question? Um, you the side lots that are properties number five and six, which is the, I guess, north, so let's say that's the western Yes, ma'am. How does the 24 foot setback, how does that, get, so how did that get established? If you, um, the ULDC requires on a PD for an external boundary, it's 30 feet. Right. But 24 feet gives them the assumption they would get an administrative waiver for 20% of that to get down to 24. 
And the reason why that was important is because if you look on the initial site plan, they originally depicted that for stormwater and green space. And one of our recommendations was to change the green space from that western boundary and the northern boundary and make it more central and open it up in a little bit of a usable park in the middle of the subdivision. And so that's what they did. So they picked up those lots as residential, but they moved that green space to that interior recreation area. Mm -hmm. So really, the, the setback, the external setback is not 30 feet. It's, it's, it's in fact 24 feet because of the waiver. Y yes, and I've asked them in writing, you know, please submit that waiver so we can get that cleared up. But that was as of Friday. Yes, ma'am. So the southern property line and the eastern, that so the southern it's uh, adjacent to an RA uh, zone property. Yes, ma'am. Um, what is there any sort of buffers in between the PD and the RA? There's a 30 foot, so that exterior boundary stayed 30 feet, but no, I was not proposing a buffer there. I did argue for a buffer on the northern side against those existing residences and they do have that a landscape buffer i did not argue one from the on the southern side and my rationale for that is because i don't believe it's going to stay residential i think that you're going to see non-residential or maybe multifamily and commercial development on that property it's about 13 acres and with their frontage on bemis road the current development um, you can see at the very tail end of this aerial just has a single residence on it. So I treated that property like it was going to be non-residential. And one day if they do multifamily or commercial against these houses, they'll be forced to put a landscape buffer there. But I treated that southern property differently than I did the northern ones because I don't think it will stay residential. Any other questions for Pat? Yeah. Commissioner Wilson. Jason, the same person on the uh, other property that owns the the property in question there. So the, the property owners, stable eventually. Um, this is owned by a separate family. Okay. So the only connection between any adjacent property owners is the subject property is owned by Ms. Zong, who also owns this, this her residence. Um, but everything else is a separate family. They're not collectively owned in any other regard. Are, are there any other setbacks in the area that's eight foot? Or are we setting a precedence? Yes, we, we have other developments that have eight feet. And yeah. fire rescue, there's a small note on there that talks about if you have houses that are within 20 feet, they don't like you to build um, fences in those side yards because they want to be able to make sure they need to put a ladder down they've got enough to get on that roof. So there's a condition that's actually on the site plan, but yes, sir, we've had, we've actually done five foot setbacks before and they just, they are not in favor of them. Eight feet is pushing it. They really like 10, but they will go along with eight feet with a fencing condition is what we have before. So you're going to put a fence in between? They have a, that note, second from the bottom, says no fences shall be built okay. between the single family units where the distance is less than 20 feet. And what that does is when they put a fence up, it just makes it at the rear of the house instead of the side. So they, they can't go from the house to the side door, they got to go to the side of the house back. That's right. Okay. I thought you were contradicting the fire department. No, okay. no, I'm, I'm here to try to support them. Uh, they're, they're much better with that eight foot in there with them. Yeah. Uh, Jason, going back to lot five and six, since we moved it right up to the property line of the existing home there, is there any buffer between those? I was not proposing a buffer um, on those Coventry lots and those other uh, between five and six. Y'all can extend that buffer down, but my motivation for the buffer was to try to go against those larger existing residences to the north. Yeah. That was really where I was trying to yeah. Push. Yeah. I mean, it's evident that the, the Coventry Road lots are, they seem to be a similar scale to what we are seeing in right. this development. Yeah. So I understand your, what you're trying to say. And there were, and, and Matt brings up a good point about there's, especially the, the larger lot here, the, um, this lot here. I mean, they, they do have some existing vegetation. I just didn't think it was enough to not have the developer provide some kind of break between there. And there was some discussion about requiring a fence, but ultimately what we settled on was a, a landscape buffer. We thought the fence might get into something that is actually counterproductive, and oh, so a, a maintained landscape area is where we settled that on. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
I agree with that, but still, these people have been living there how long? And nothing yeah. in the backyard. And, For a decade. You know, and I'm talking about here, or even on uh, on lot 17 and uh, 16 and 17 in Coventry. Mm -hmm. But even they've been living there with nothing in the backyard, and all of a sudden they're going to have have a house flaring right into their back door. And I'll let the engineer handle this, but I, I think if you look on your survey in your packet, um, it shows you the adjacent owners of uh, 16 to 17. And, hold on. and they'll have to tell you, sir, because I, I, I know the developer owns 15, obviously. I don't know if he owns um, 14 and 16 around it or 17. I know there's a house on that row. I just don't have a note to confirm. Okay, exactly. Mr. Can we talk about the parking? Um, sure. So yes, each, each one of the residential dwelling units will is it work at one car garage? It so is. So the assumption is there's one car per unit. Are there any other parking? Yes. And there, if you look under the second bullet point, residential driveway shall be a minimum of 18 feet wide. So the idea is, even though we don't have true residential parking standards, the idea is not only do you have a garage, but you provide a driveway that's wide enough for two vehicles. So in the 15-foot front yard, mm -hmm. there's an 18-foot wide driveway that's going to allow for... The 15-foot is a, yes, and the 15-foot from the right-of-way to the start of the house. That's, 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 that's the sense. So you got more than 15 feet. Well, from the, the, the setback, the, the setback is from the property line. That's, yes. <clears throat> so that's from the investment property. So the idea is that there could be, so we are able to park in front of the houses. Yes, and, and we've had some success with that. The subdivisions where we have not required a wider driveway, you, I would say you see more parking in the street. So our idea is to provide for at least two spaces in the driveway. Um, I can tell you the only other place that we tried to uh, provide parking was on the recreation area and ultimately we went away from that because we've done that twice before and they've had problems with parking seems to invite people who don't live in the neighborhood to use the recreation area so by not providing parking you encourage people if you want to use it you have to walk and you limit that use by providing parking what we've learned is you actually get people who drive park who don't live in the neighborhood so so the, the size of the lot, minimum front yard is 50 feet, yes. minimum width, and what's the depth? What, what is it averaging about? The smallest you could go is 100 feet. Oh, you have 5,000? Yes, ma'am. But that was the idea, is to try to pick up at least two parking spaces um, and a single car garage. But let's just say they don't use a single car garage, they use it for storage, because that's a common use. Then what you have is enough for a enough spaces for two uh, county parking spaces. A county parking space, Carmel, is it nine by 10? Or how much is the specs for a county parking space? Nine by 18. Nine by 18. Nine by 18. So that, thank you, ma'am, sorry. So you, so you get some some room there for uh, the depth of the car. Anyone here tonight wishing to speak in favor of this request can come forward this time. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this request? Good evening, sir. Good evening. My name is Matt Phelps. I'll be speaking <coughs> here uh, for everything that happened next night. Uh, my address is, address is 4560 Road. I'm on the drive. Uh, lots of questions up here, and I'll be happy to address anything y'all have. I did want to point out a couple things first. Um, person did a great job hitting all these, so I want to emphasize a couple. Uh, intentionally, all of the lots are pulled away from the uh, properties to the north. All the R1 uh, is only there at a minimum 30 foot buffers, 10 foot landscape. Uh, lots number 34 and 35 by the entrance to row 2. We did decide to rotate those um, in that orientation just to reduce <coughs> The, the, back of the, the number of lots facing the power property instead of five, there's only four now. Uh, just lots of small little things like that, the details that we try to incorporate adjacent cells just to make this as, as appealing as 
it's possible. Uh, let this development <coughs> fit on this little spot of land. Uh, <coughs> the uh, so the recreation area, um, we did get that centralized uh, <coughs> where it's, it's can serve everyone with, with the uh, sidewalks that are proposed to be put in. Like Jason said, we did want to put in the, the parking spaces because other developments directly next door, Coventry being one, uh, it's bringing people in from, from surrounding areas and, and they, they don't pay homeowner dues to upkeep and maintain it. And they're just going to throw the trash out. They're just not taking care of it as much as people that actually live there and that it's intended to do. It's not a public farm. It's a private area for those residences. Um, Something I will say, uh, Mr. Hall, you brought up lots uh, 16 and 17 and 14. There's actually no homes on those lots as of right now. Um, that they're, they're, I'm not sure they've been sold yet. I think the development may still own those three. They might not be the only three left. Um, and this lot, number uh, 15, has actually been held out just for this reason to try and get a second access. Um, so this property <laughs> is um, Otherwise, we don't have one access to Mulligan which would severely limit uh, these property owners what they could do with this property. So um, that's just a couple things I want to bring up. Uh, if you have anything you want me to specifically address, you want to Commissioner, do you have a question for our presenter? Matt, did you say that there's no uh, armed base uh, in the coverage <coughs> section? There is in the coverage or, uh, or off the, directly off the street. I'm talking, I'm talking about the green space. That there, there's, there's not, that's not in the Coventry. So that, there is a green space and park area in Coventry. Okay. Okay. And, and that's where the people um, are seeing the homeowners are seeing issues. That's just one example. There's others next door and, and, and all the surrounding neighborhoods nearby are seeing the same issues. One more question. I know that uh, the county has put on here a, a one condition that, that they want to extend the sidewalk. Do you see an issue with that? I did. I, I'll express that the developer would, would not want that condition to be put on. Um, the sidewalk that's proposed, and, and as it's in, in the regulations, is for meant to serve this development. Um, and we see extending into to try to connect to neighboring neighborhoods. Uh, it is, again, something inviting people in from outside um, the specific neighborhood that the recreation area is intended to, to serve. Um, so that, that's a requirement that will be above and beyond what's, what's in the code, um, which is partly it does come down to, that's a financial issue of just money being spent that's above and beyond the code, really, after the various give and take we've had with staff and we three lots all the original plan and increase the lot sizes. So there's been some, some compromises made already. Uh, that's one of the developer would prefer not to have to do. Um, I see that as something if later down the road, if the homeowners association of Coventry Villas wanted to <coughs> talk to Coventry next door and merge their sidewalks and, and walk the paths, I think that's something that's two HOAs would be more appropriate to make that determination at that time. Um, in Coventry, their sidewalk is actually on the other side of the street. That's, that's going to be my next question to you. Yeah. Want to join? If they want to they'll have to be a crosswalk across uh, Coventry Drive there. So that, that just means that that's pedestrians crossing there. That's one more thing that may not be the best to promote concentrate people crossing the street uh, in the neighborhood. So there's a couple different reasons there. So developer would prefer not to um, have that be put on the result. Any questions for our presenter? Matt, thank you very much. Sir. Anyone else here this evening wishing to speak in favor of this request, please come forward this time. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Good evening. Good evening. Um, name and address, please, ma'am. My name is Glenda Solomon, and I live at 388 Old Pine Road. And I am the owner of the land. And um, I just want to say that this plan development 
has been well thought out and well planned, and every effort has been made to make it complimentary and to the existing homeowners in the area. And I believe that it will give first-time homeowners uh, a chance to own their own home at an affordable price. And I believe that um, it will be a great addition to the Old Pine Road, Mulligan Road area. Thank you. Ms. Alwood, just uh, if you have any questions for the presenter. Excuse me? Ms. I, I got a, I have one quick question for you. Uh, yes. you, live, you still live out there, don't you? Yeah. And, and your plan is to continue to live there? Exactly. Yes. Yes, yeah, he's been there 31 years. Take care of the police. Oh, yeah. I, uh, he answered my question. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She's lived out there 31 years. And I don't plan to move. I've been there too long. She's been there a long time. Good deal. Good deal. Any other questions, guys? Thank you. <coughs> have a good evening. Thank you. I do have time for one more wishing to speak in favor of. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of, please go forward. There being none, anyone here tonight wishing to speak against this request, come forward this time. Anyone wishing to speak against this request, come forward this time. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. State your name and address for the record, please. Uh, my name is Brenda Powell, and my address is 4126 Mulligan Road. And I appreciate the comments that were said earlier about the residents, how they've lived there for so many years, and I mean decades, just as well as, not quite as long as Ms. Song, but um, my home has been a home where I've lived since I've been in Valdosta and raised my children there, and it's been uh, fabulous over the years. I don't necessarily have an absolute objection to this development, but I want to ensure the privacy that we've always had. Um, the uh, developer mentioned having a privacy fence at the back of the residential lots. And then when we're speaking of the buffer, you know, I would like for it to be well within code as to what is expected. I don't want anything less, you know, as far as what we have, um, you know, lived there a good part of our lives and we've been accustomed to. And this is the county still yes. as of now. Um, like I said, I'm not totally in objection, but I want to make sure that the things that just were mentioned briefly tonight is I was here are going to be in place, such as um, the landscaping, you know, against um, my neighbor's home, you know, where the road's going to be. I'd also like to have the landscaping on my side of that, that road as well, on both sides. It, it, on this, on the, this projection above my head, which, which one of these lots do you live in? I'm just curious. Uh, it would be to the left of the blue right there. That's where you live? Yes. Okay. Yes. And so, like I said, I don't have an absolute objection. I just want to make sure that we are within code, and I would want that if it's a 30-foot buffer, I am asking for that maximum 30-foot buffer. You know, and I'm asking for, you know, uh, as the privacy fence at the back of the areas. And just to maintain the standard of living that um, we've had all these years. <laughs> Jason, that is on the two sides that she's in question about, is that is that covered up the, the landscape buffer? It is in the Ms. Powell, let me give you, this is, you probably have not, let me give you your copy of this. Okay. It'll show you the landscape buffer, the specifications that we want within that buffer, and then it'll show you the setbacks against your property. And that was something that was important to us as well, but that will give you that in writing, and you can see it in writing. And, what you know, what what's going, are we going to find out what's in the homeowners association? Is it going to be standard homeowners association? Will we pro be provided those documents as well? You know, because obviously we want to protect our environment. You know, okay. right. I will tell you, I, this developer, his track record in the area is next door in Coventry as well as in Glen Laurel further down the street. Mm -hmm. So I would expect a covenant package that's similar, but that, Unless it's conditioned otherwise, that will be up to him as far as what specifications he has. But everything on this site plan, if this is what the county commission staff recommends, planning commission recommends, county commission says this is what's going to happen, 
if they make a decision that this site plan is what needs to happen, then that's what needs to happen. So they actually will put this on record. And these requirements will be on record saying this is something that is required. And I'll give you I'll give you my copy here if you don't have one. That way you can see where we're at right now. And that details the setbacks and the and the buffering we talked about. Yeah. Hi. This is sort of to add to uh, Ms. Carl in the current plan, and Jason, please correct me if I'm wrong. The proposed uh, landscape buffer is 10 feet, mm -hmm. correct? And probably that, that, would go, uh, that would be on the south side of your property as well as the east side. That's correct. Both edges with the development. Um, your question is is that, and this is my question to you, Jason, so is that 10 foot buffer? Mm -hmm. um, what would have been required typically between no typically on a if this were this is single family mm -hmm. we typically don't have a buffer between single family and single family which is what you are two residences why we um argued for a buffer with the developer and they agreed was because these residences are so much smaller in lot size than your residence so we felt like even though it's not typically required, we felt like it was appropriate to make it compatible. Uh, well, I have one other question. So what is the, the standard buffer from our, our property line? Is it from my property line to the back mm -hmm. going forward into the new development? What is that standard buffer? So for this development, the standard buffer is 30 feet. 30 feet, okay. So the setback, so that means that they could not have a house within 30 feet. <coughs> they had like a shed, something like that, like an accessory building. They would have it within 10 feet but with the landscape buffer and the site plan they've shown us that i would expect any residences to be within 30 feet and i expect that 10 foot buffer to remain so i think those depending on the building that's what you're talking about could i just add something to that yes, the current zoning designation of your property is ra correct the current for zoning, miss powell's yes. it is r1 r1 the current zoning designation of this property that is being proposed is also R1, correct? It's PD. It's no, planned. not what they are proposing. What is the current zoning? Oh, yes, ma'am. It's R1 and uh, RA. R1 and RA. Well, part of their property, part of this development is also R1 currently, right? Yes, ma'am. So the area, what I'm getting to is that currently, if there was no development here and somebody were to put, to put something up on this property using the current designation, they can come in here and subdivide the R1 property into one acre lots and these will go up directly against your property. That's, that's current, that's inherent to the current designation of this property. And there will not be any buffers required. No, so what, what, what the proposal is doing is they are creating a figurative dense development but what they are trying to do is they're trying to isolate it with a buffer That's right. all around the edges so I, I i think they are trying to be as sensitive as possible <coughs> to the <coughs> I, I, I have trouble with this group. i just want to know what's going to be there to protect you know the environment that we've been accustomed to and mm -hmm. other neighbors that we've been accustomed to living in for decades well, thank you very much. It's fine, Dirk. Anyone else here wish to just speak against this request and report this time? Yes. I'm just curious. On, on, the, on the right left side of the phone, the, the, those other trees, that, is that 30 foot setback? 30 foot setback. There? Set set there wasn't any buffer there. There wasn't any landscape. Okay. How you doing, sir? I'm doing fine, sir. My name is Tony Fowler. I'm the one that wills right there, the big part right there where the driveway is coming in. Okay. And the only thing that I have against this, uh, and it's not against it, I talked to Mr. Jerry, and I think we can do this here, is, is the driveway coming in is right next to my driveway that comes on my lot. My driveway is right there on the corner where you turn into my lot. You can see that it comes right in there to my house. And my question request was to move the driveway over just a little bit more so I wouldn't have people making a mistake of turning into my driveway thinking they're going into my uh, division. Yes, sir. Because my door is right there at that driveway, too. Yes, sir. You know, and, and like I said, if he comes halfway back where my pecan tree is, mm -hmm. then he can keep it right where it's at. I don't care. Just a little way down the road from where it comes in on my driveway. I am really pleased with 
the diagram that is on that board, I have no problem with it at all. They have turned that room there. <coughs> we did know that. And Mr. Fowler just may not have seen it yet, but you can see where um, to bring that new road in to Mulligan because it's at an angle. Um, can, you put, can you put your marker back for At a 90. So to, to bring that. Uh, I'm sorry. So you can see here in this proposal, the developer has straightened that out, but their initial proposal, they actually curved it. And so what you're saying, Mr. Fowler, is on the initial site plan where that driveway was curved, you like that better than the site plan where it just goes straight out. You just well, like I think it's it less if you people turn it in there at night. On that section of my driveway coming into my house, it's wide. Yes, sir. But so I have a mobile home, a motor home, and I need to back it in there. So it's a wide driveway. Yes, sir. That's a wide driveway. And my, my other request would be if you could just move over just a little bit further so that when they turn in the lights, wouldn't be coming into my den where I spend 90% of my time at night. Out there where we live in our region. Uh, we have the double doors and everything else. Is that nice? I just request that move over about halfway and then the rest of it can say right where it's at. I have no problem. I'll play this great. I don't have any problem with it coming down the back part of my land there. When it gets down to where the, you put the barns up there, please. Mm -hmm. See where the first white barn is there? That pecan tree right there. If you have it, it's just like it is. I just request from there up that it moves over a little bit so it wouldn't be, I wouldn't have a noise when I'm sitting in my den watching TV or listening to something or we're talking or whatever uh, of the traffic coming by. That's my one request. Other than that, I am pleased with everything that the designer and the building man has laid out here. Jerry got laid out. It's, it's a great plan. I have no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Fowler, thank you again. Okay. Mr. time on the former and against. Any discussion amongst ourselves in this case? Mr. Chairman, I just have one question for staff. Yes, sir, please. Jason, if I, I apologize if I missed this, but what was uh, what was your driving force to put the extend the sidewalk? If you already covered that, I apologize. Right? No, 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 sir. I mean, to me, my driving force was I think it makes sense to extend that sidewalk 124 feet because I believe the residents from Coventry and Coventry Villas, while there's an opportunity there for them to have the same HOA, and I understand Mr. Phelps' comments, I think it just makes sense from a planning standpoint not to give, not to leave a gap in the sidewalk that's that short. Um, especially when we have control over it right now because they need that to provide the second point of ingress egress. So I consider that part of the development very connected to something where we already have an existing sidewalk in Coventry. And I just think it makes sense not to leave a gap in the sidewalk that's that short between two sidewalk systems. So I'm trying to provide a contiguous way for someone to use the sidewalk through both developments. Um, one of the things that Coventry had that was very special was they had a paved sidewalk if you drive out there to the southwest for when the property of the south goes to non-residential. So those residents don't have to get out on beam as they're mulligan and come all the way down. They can just take those sidewalks and take a pedestrian and cut down there. So I just want to provide a complete system. And I think we're close enough to do that. And I, I, I believe it's worth it. Fine, thank you. Even, yeah. though, even though the existing sidewalk is across the street, you're still in favor of that. I am, sir. I mean, certainly in residential neighborhoods, I'm back there if I'm wrong, but you typically don't get a crosswalk when you have sidewalks across the street from each other because they're local roads. If this is a collector or an arterial, we probably would need to talk about a higher level of infrastructure, but for those sidewalks, if you look at residential areas, there typically is not a flashing light or, you know, a stri strip on the pavement. We typically just have sidewalks in and people have to use good judgment and cross the street to go to the other side. So it is 125 foot? I think it's around, I measured about 124 feet okay. of additional sidewalk because you have that lot, lot 15 is 100 feet wide, 100 feet deep, and then the side yard setback on your site plan where they end the sidewalk is proposed to be 24. So I, I calculated about 124 feet of sidewalk. Yes, I was thinking on the, on the sidewalk, uh, the kids in both of these neighborhoods are going to be going to the same school. You know, they're going to be going back and forth to, to, to play or to study or play computer games or whatever. So I think adding it in there now, especially since there is no house on uh, lot 16 there now, it'd be a whole lot easier to get it in there now than once somebody builds on it and you come in and tell them you want to, want to take off their side of their house there and put a sidewalk. Yes, sir. 
they make it a little more difficult to sell? I understand. We, we worked with the developer to try to make the sidewalk requirement pretty minimal as far as location. It's not on both sides of the street. It's just trying to serve an access to everyone. But I do, I think connecting that system to something that's successful and existing makes sense to me. It was worth the condition. You do not have the no, I'm not requiring a sidewalk out from Mullen. It wouldn't. We thought about that, Matt, but it just wouldn't connect to an existing system. You take a sidewalk to a stub out, maybe good for a bus stop, but that really would be its only purpose. Mr. Glamour, I just have to say, Mr. Glamour, about the sidewalk. I mean, I would be clearly a proponent for connecting neighborhoods, but I think in this in this situation, the developer is trying to create this kind of a private, it's almost, I mean, this is as gated of a community as you can get it, but without the gate to it. So right. I think that's what they're trying to establish, and I really think this should be up to them. They feel the need to connect both of their developments. I really don't see it that strong of a benefit, whether that sidewalk should be connected or not, because the matter of fact, I mean, the, the reality of it is, this neighborhood is not going to have much traffic, and right. people are going to use this road and jog and run, and it's the people that live there. I really don't, I don't feel very strongly about the sidewalk, whether it should even be there or not. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my, the second thing I wanted to talk about is, um, is, has, is the roadway coming in from uh, Mulligan Road, has, has it been considered, you know, whether it could be, like it could be centered into that lot and have storm water on both sides of that road? I mean, is there any flexibility in reorienting that road or realigning it just so we can be more sensitive with uh, um, privacy. I, I do, sir. Matt, will you step back up, please? I think the answer is yes, Commissioner, but I think what Matt tried to do in the site plan is push everything over to one side so you can keep the right of way without a gap. Is it, is it a cost issue to do both on each side, Matt? I'm just curious. No. Well, no, it wouldn't be a cost issue. Uh, the, the center of the road, um, it becomes a, an issue of when you split from going from one to two ponds, you actually start losing volume in mm -hmm. your capacity in the ponds. Um, so you've got, now you have two sides. You have to go deeper and right. Right. So really it would become a matter of work, engineering wise. Mm -hmm. um, that was actually something we did briefly before the meeting discussed with, with the, the powers and the power. If that's something that we can do and put the road in the center, I, I see no issue in why. Um, that would be a, just a, something I could determine in the engineering phase. Is it physically possible? I, I think the issue there really is just to, to ensure that people get to the desti to the proper destination. And I think you can address that aesthetically with your proper. And, and also, I will mention to, to address Mr. Fowler about the road coming out straight. It will, that, that's just a simple depiction of the, where the road will mm -hmm. be. It will curve and um, come into a 90 degree like that um, mm -hmm. in the Mulligan Road. I know, man, I didn't even catch it on the difference in the site plan, but I didn't even see the, the it turn go away. And also, mm -hmm. it'll be the original, uh, just to meet code. Uh, it has to be a 90 degree connection, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, Yeah, that's just conceptual, it's not perfect yeah. design. So okay. if we can shift the road, uh, I'll leave the I'll leave. Thank you, Matt. Just glad we got more questions, right? No, I'm good. Uh, Thanks, Matt. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jason, anybody else got any questions? Guys? I, I want to talk about the sidewalk again. Um, you're saying you want to keep it private, but yet you're accessing that subdivision through Coventry Road. It makes no sense of how you're going to keep it private. Um, so I kind of disagree with about the sidewalks. I think you do need to connect the sidewalks in there because you're going to have folks coming from that, kids coming from that, and they're going to be walking in that street if you don't have a sidewalk there. You, you understand what I'm talking about? I mean, if you didn't have that entrance coming from the from the uh, Coventry, is that it? Coventry? Mm -hmm. Coventry Drive, if you didn't have that entrance coming in, I could understand it being being private, but I mean, that makes me, I don't follow your reasoning with uh, privacy when you're accessing, you got a main access entrance and exit into Coventry. Am I not thinking right, Commissioner? 
No, I just, no, I mean, that, that's, that's... I'm thinking safety, uh, you know. I think they, they are, as a development, they are obligated to have two means of entry into this development because they have gone over a certain amount of lots. I think they have so, 24. Right, so I think if they did not, if they did, if they weren't forced to have two entries, they, they probably would not have connected to Coventry, and I might be mistaken, right? But yeah, so they're, I could tell what they are trying to achieve is, I think they're trying to create a separate homeowner association here, and that, so I really don't see how, maybe they, in reality, they are going to be connected and people are going to flow from one. Well, you got a road going to it again. The main, the main entry, really, that's going to be emphasized is going to be coming through um, Mulligan Road. If you were visiting this, somebody there, I think that's the main access into this development. So I can sort of see what they are trying to achieve. And don't take me wrong, I'm one of those that want a sidewalk everywhere, yeah. both sides of the street, I want to connect them all. <laughs> But I can see what they are trying to achieve, and I to, to, to make that as a condition to see it, uh, I think, I don't see it necessarily. I, just, yeah. just, just to tell both of you what I do every day, they should have a sign on sidewalks that says, walk here, because <laughs> mothers with their babies and the carriages are in the road. And no left turn. No, just, Hear me on that. So I'm not a sidewalk kind of guy, but that's here or there. Unfortunately, I get them after they walked into the road. You do. I do. All right. So, guys, any more discussion before I ask for a motion on this? Mr. Willis, can I get you, Mr. Glad, on the same page here, or what we're going to do here? I'm not sure. Depending on where she's going to put the sidewalk in there. Okay. You might not know till afterwards. Though. Uh, I will. I will take a motion on this request this evening, Mr. Chairman. I would like to make a recommendation recommendation to the county commission to approve this with the existing conditions, including the sidewalk. So, okay, so you want to make a condition to make sure it's after 125 foot. I thought it was an existing condition, isn't it? It is. Okay, right. Uh, so we have a motion, Commissioner Hall. Do I have a second? I second that motion. And second. Any discussion on the motion? If I could add one more thing, just for safety reasons, I think they're going to take care of the uh, adjustment on the uh, modification on the drive coming in off of Mulligan. Well, Would you modify your... That will be an engineering thing. Pardon me? That, that will be an engineering thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. any, other, any other discussion? That being said, we have a motion there. A second. All in favor of the motion, please seek by raising your right hand. Oh, come on. Hey, Ms. Carmel, that is unanimous, 8-0. Motion passes with one condition. Thank you much, guys, for an extended case on that. Yes, sir. Matt, 